Hi guys, I'm Shmi. Hello to you. Welcome back to the channel and welcome to beautifully sunny Munich, the home of BMW, where today I'm visiting the BMW Welt to collect my M5. So thanks to BMW M, I'm going to be driving the M5 for the next couple of months, but the journey starts right here with a factory collection. So let's head inside and take a look at the car. We're surrounded here by the factory over on one side, the offices and museum on the other. That's a brand new M3 CS that's just been collected. There's a 5 Series with M performance parts as well. That sounds good. So European delivery you can do from the US or Canada. You can do a collection if you're from Germany, France or Italy or the like. You can opt to come here and pick up the car. But we're going to see a little bit behind the scenes. So as well as jumping into the Velt to have a look around the showroom, we're going to see the M5 being prepared ahead of where it goes for the collection. I am absolutely buzzing let's get inside welcome to the bmw velt the bmw world here if you're arriving to collect a car you check in over at the side there but it is also a showroom so you have the likes of the 7 series the new bmw z4 concept car as well coming up you've got rolls royce the m cars you have mini let's go explore this is going to be great when it's unveiled in full the concept at the moment for the new z4 but coming not too long from now i think there's a special display for the new x4 the latest member of the bmw lineup Tucked in at the back, the beautiful Rolls-Royce Phantom 8, the latest generation of the ultimate in luxury. Next is BMW Individual, where they have on display a 7 Series and a 6 Series Grand Coupe, but you can really customise and personalise a vehicle as much as you desire, from colours to interior parts. And I'm going to be paying a visit to BMW Individual to take a look through some different options with the M5 in due course. Given that I'm here today for BMW M, let's take a look around M's stand. We've got an M6 convertible to get us started. Behind that, the M3 competition with some M performance parts. Then we get to the M2, which is coming towards the end of its line, being replaced by the M2 competition that we've had a first look at. And then at the end here, the first edition M5 in the frozen dark red metallic, our first M5 of the day. But that is what we are here to see today. Well, not this exact one, but one that is going to be handed over right up there. So the first thing I need to do is go and get myself fully checked in, go up to the premium lounge up top where you can grab drinks and refreshments while the car is being prepped for us to go and see. All signed in and documents checked, so now we're going to experience the side of this process that happens behind the scenes. This is quite literally where cars arrive here at the BMW Velt, transporters coming down the ramp behind me, they're unloaded over this way before each car is checked, signed off and crosses this line to enter into the BMW Velt for final preparation. So a few cars lined up here, but we're going to go through and literally retrace the steps that the M5 has taken before we catch it at the very final stages. As you can see a lot of cars come through here they deliver between 80 and 120 per day a peak of up to 160 if required all handed over here so lines of cars ready to go to their customers and here it is for the first time, the Donington Grey M5. I'll run over all of the specs when it's pulled out in a moment, but this is their very clever storage system. So when cars are prepared, they get taken away, taken away by robots and stored until the customer signs in upstairs, ready for delivery. So it's gonna get pulled out in a moment. We can have a full run around it, but how exciting is this? The first start we've heard of the 4.4 litre twin turbocharged V8. It sounds good. This car has the M Sports exhaust. Just look at this, the ultimate super saloon. Sounds so good. I'm just chasing it around as it goes towards the preparation handling bay here. This is so, so nice. The car is very highly specced. You can see it's got the ceramic brakes. The number plate is already prepared. Munich registered because it comes from the BMW M fleet. Convenience that it also has an M then right there. Burbling away. At this final stage, the car gets its last preparation. The number plates would be installed as well, but they're already on this car, ready for delivery. Let's have a first glance at the interior as well, which is where we're going to become very familiar with daily driving this in Germany coming up. And I've driven a few M5s, but this looks awesome. The illuminated M5 badge there on the headrest, the M1 and M2 buttons mounted on the steering wheel in red, the red start stop button, just small touches that make it incredibly smart. This is looking very, very nice. Saturn 
in carbon fiber trim as well it's got a carbon fiber roof the spec is gorgeous but we'll go over that upstairs in more detail for now it's going to be taken out and put onto the turntable ready for handover and here it arrives on the delivery floor inside the BMW Velt. Normally the car would be ready on its turntable when you get here. We'll head around and see it in a moment. The M5 is in situ on its turntable, but we're gonna return now back to the lounge to sign on and start the handover process from up there. This is where the customer journey begins. You meet with your delivery specialist, name up on the board to go down and see the car that I can actually see is lurking right down there at the moment but we will start with a virtual introduction to it there are 13 booths here where the software can load up the configuration of your exact car so i am joined by my delivery specialist tillman here hi nice to meet you and i believe we can bring up the car right here can we that's right so unlock it so this is the brand new car you're picking up today there we have it the perfect matched specification so you can get this is about getting a quick introduction to it right getting a that's right an overview of spec options how it works right. before you go down and see the actual exactly. car exactly very cool here we at first we can just ah. spin the car around it's the right choice of wheels and ceramic brakes isn't it i guess so lovely from the rear. yeah starting here talking about the engine you know oh this is cool interactive yeah <laughs> oh yeah we do and 600 is a very conservative estimate <laughs> i feel if we put it on a dyno it might be substantially more but 600 odd horsepower 750 newton meters of torque yeah that's a lot yes and uh, just that we have the chance to take a look inside of it. yes well we've just had a glance at the interior of this car so we've seen the spec of it with the carbon carbon trim and inlays obviously a big fan of the red buttons that are introduced now look at the m specific Head uh, yeah. display. This is neat. So you get to pick out, you can pick out a few highlight features about each and any car, and this software will load anything exactly. from the entire range yeah. and run through some of those important details specific to the options you have on your car. Now it's time to go and see the car, and this is where, if you hadn't been to the pre preparation stages, so the normal customer experience, you would look over the edge here, and there is the M5 awaiting us to head down and see it in more detail. So let's go and run over this. There's a very specific reason for the direction of these stairs, and that, of course, is the BMW headquarter building over the other side. The museum is over that side. You've got a good view of the tornado as part of the design of the Velt itself, and then the factory over there too. But it just, it prolongs the excitement as you come towards your new car for the first time. And it might not technically be my actually own car, but I am really rather excited to get out and about, including the autobahns today, in that. The car is spinning around on the turntable, we can get a good look at it, but we're actually going to move it over just to another space for the moment so that we can talk about it slightly further away from other customers' cars and run through the details. As I walk over, have a look at this as well, the MotoGP safety car BMW 1M. Now I had a play with the M5 safety car, the newest one, but that looks awesomely cool as well. Anywho, we now have the M5 in the corner. Let's go take a look. Okay, so at first we take a short view under the hood and then after this we will sit in the car to talk about everything that is important for you. For sure, and this is quite exciting as well because the spec of this car, like I mentioned earlier guys, is very, very high, including, if I come through and lift this up, the carbon fiber engine bay that looks very nice at the top there yeah normally you are supposed to drive not faster than 170 kilometers per hour mm. and not go higher than 5500 rpms for the because normally it would be a brand new car yes that's right but the audience know that this car has come from bmw m's fleet so it's done a few thousand kilometers already it's good to go straight away the engine's been run in and driven i'm not sure if it's done track days and things before but it is fitted with the ceramic brakes on the 706 M style wheels, which look very, very, very nice. We've got Pirelli tires, P0s on there. I've already failed to close the bonnet. No, Demonstration no, time. <laughs> Please go like this. Slam it, okay, perfect. In place, and we were just hearing an explanation that normally the car would now be plugged in so that the battery doesn't drain while being given a demonstration of all the features. But we do not need to run through all of that right now. One other very nice touch, by the way, is that my luggage that I dropped off earlier at check-in has found its way to the car as well, which is super convenient. Nice process all around. 
Let me jump in then and take my first seat in the M5 that is going to do many miles in the near future. It feels good. It actually smells incredibly new, which is very, very nice. 3,111 kilometers on the clock. These buttons are so good. First uh, idea would be to turn on the ignition, so mm -hmm. not having the foot on the brake, pressing here three times very quickly. Uh, means the Three car... times to enable and wake it up. Exactly. Yeah. Comfort access, the steering wheel lowers itself. Sure. And then I just open the windows here in the, in the rear. Mm -hmm. um, just for your information, you can not only open, you can also close the trunk. You can close the trunk yeah, from awesome. the button on the door. Very How convenient. Very nice. Magic. Yeah. And a great view of the headquarter building right behind. <laughs> That's right. Yeah, driving at night, please press this little button here. We call mm -hmm. it high beam assistant. You see yep. the symbol here. And then the car goes to high beam and low beam for you. Yep. Um, and it has the very, very clever trick headlights, doesn't yes. it? Yes. We call it selective beam. And selective beam. Yeah, they're very helpful. So that. when a vehicle is coming towards you, the car kind of directs the headlight beam around it. That's right. Yeah. Magical. I was also learning about the park assist. So to do the park assist, which, which button is it you press? This button you would have to press. Okay, so when you're looking for a parking space, you bring that up, it and searches for the space. Double check that this is activated. Mm -hmm. And okay. then please don't drive faster than 35 kilometers per hour. Okay. And then the car will do the parking for you. Magical. I'm looking forward to testing that out. It works in a space that is the length of the car plus just 80 centimeters, which I'm gonna to put to the test. <laughs> See how it does. Very good idea. Lovely, we have plenty of other assistance and safety systems I need to exit out of the, uh, the parking which you do by pressing the button again and then we can press assist so we can go through these as well in due course and have a look at everything that the car offers plenty of different things we have the radar sensor at the front as well so we have adaptive cruise control lane assistance this car is completely specced to the top isn't it it's got absolutely everything we've got the key lurking down there so we've got the M um, key for the car the stripes on the side of it it also has the m drivers package which means that the top speed of the car is raised from the normal 250 kilometers an hour to a top speed of 305 so the car can do 300 kilometers an hour which is always very very nice we have technology like the gesture control which by the way if you haven't seen it before you literally raise and lower the volume or answer the phone or do different things by simply interacting with it and just doing different stuff, different gestures control various aspects of the car. So a lot of equipment to play with and get to know and explore. I'm looking forward to driving this an awful lot. We've got the Harman Kardon sound system as well, for some good music. And one thing that Tillman was just telling me about the adaptive radar control, cruise control. Yeah, the good thing about it, the, you see the sensor down here. Yeah, the first time um, this sensor uh, has a heating. So yeah, so climbing like, in the winter times, uh, you have. Well, I don't know. it's it's not very wintry, <laughs> but I can tell you from experience of cars with radar control. If you do drive them in bad weather, they do get covered in dirt and all sorts of grime, and it means the adaptive cruise control stops working. So in this, that isn't the case. There is an awful lot to it. So. I think that's a brief introduction. You can come and have various different levels of overview of the car, depending what you want, depending what your collection is all about. But I obviously know a fair bit about it, so all that is left is to take it outside and go drive. First drive time, and what they do here that's quite special is the opportunity to go for a victory lap, and we're going to do it in style with the 1M safety car leading the way. So that's going to start up any moment, and then I'm going to follow it around just for a circle for a bit of fun before we drive outside. Okay, it is on the way, which means that it is time for me to get prepared and start up the M5, which sounds so quiet compared to the 1M. Okay then, I get the job now of going into drive and going for my victory lap behind the 1M safety car with its lights flashing inside. This is so cool. Completely abnormal, unusual situation, but awesomely fun and here we are in the M5, the first half a kilometer, is a small circle around the indoors of the BMW Velt. This is so cool. <laughs> that was a cheeky little slide there. Oh, the noise of that thing. Phenomenal. 
Okay, so this is a completely abnormal way to go about a collection video, but there we go, following the safety car, and it is now time to head on out. <laughs> what a way to get on the way. Down we go. And out we go then. So you slowly drive up to these shutters, which are opening to let us out on the road where I can see it's been raining. How did that happen? It wasn't supposed to be wet at all today. It was beautifully sunny when we arrived. Oh well, that might mean a slightly slower journey back home than otherwise, but here we go. M5, out on the way. It's time to drive to Frankfurt. We stopped to take a few pictures, but now off we go. It is about a four hour drive. It says it is 250 miles, so about 400 kilometers we've got to go today. The head up display in here is very, very nice. I'm not gonna lie what I'm looking at while I drive, but gentle cruise mode. And don't forget, this car has MX drive. You could make it a two wheel drive car. So you can press the uh, button here to go into MDM mode where it will go into four wheel drive sport. Or if you press and hold it and look at the screen just while I do this, you will see that we can configure the MX drive and you can put it into two wheel drive. Now we're not gonna drive with that right now because we are literally just cruising on our way towards Frankfurt. But you can have these set up to hotkey that as well, which is really cool. So there is a lot to learn, but let's get out of Munich, get onto the open roads and head, well, on the autobahns. The first four kilometers so far have basically been a non-stop traffic jam. It looks like it's just opening up though as we're at the start of the autobahns, but not the most exciting drive to speak of. Hopefully it's going to be clearer later. But before we get too far, I want to say that the experience today at the BMW Welt has been absolutely epic. They do about 20,000 deliveries there a year, about one and a half thousand of which are people who have come over from the US and Canada. And it's so cool that you can pick up your car here, drive it around Europe for a couple of weeks and then ship it back home. Or if you're from Europe, there are a couple of different tiers of collection. So there's one called Compact Plus, if you're familiar with it and you've done it before and you basically just want to pick up the car, take it and go, but get it from the home of BMW. Or the premium like we've done today where you get the opportunity to go and chill out in the lounge, have some food and more of a, a more detailed walkthrough of everything. But here we are in the M5. This is happening. Driving the German daily that we've been waiting for since I announced it. It's here. The fun miles are ahead of us. Hopefully today we'll be able to stretch the legs a little bit, but I've been playing around, as you can imagine, with the different driving modes. You can change just about everything. So the car has the eight speed auto. You can go through three different gearbox settings. You can individually adjust your just about everything, suspension, steering, power change, powertrain, uh, throttle response, the head-up display can show different things depending how you want it. It's overload. Anyway, we'll probably do some more full featured videos with the car during the time we're driving it. The guy really uh, pushed out right in front of us there. Anyway, always keep on, on, on your, your eyes up. A8L, I'm sure that's quite comfortable, but yeah, let's hope we get out of this jam and on the open flowing motorway. There's still a fair amount of traffic on the autobahn. The sun has disappeared behind some clouds, soon to set, but we're cruising along. To be honest, it's a very peaceful car to cruise in. When you're used to more extreme things, shall we say, this feels incredibly relaxing. And then you remember it's a car that does actually have 600 horsepower. We've been driving at 150 kilometers an hour to about 180 kilometers an hour, which is still very quick if you're used to UK or French or any other motorways outside of Germany. It would have been nicer to stretch the legs a little bit more and put it in the different modes and experience the sound, but that's also something that's developed in this generation. You still have that artificial computer speaker generated sound, but nowhere nearly as offensively as in the early stages, the first cars that did it. I mean, just now actually we're going 180 or so. There's a line of cars up ahead, but we've got a few toggles and things we can change through so we can go up through the put all the settings into slightly sportier modes, powertrain up to Sport Plus, the gearbox, you can make a little bit more aggressive. Obviously it's still automatic, get a bit of sound out of it there, it's sixth gear, it shifts very quickly, down into fifth, and then if it does open up, I'll get a small opportunity just to uh, stretch it for a moment. Up to 200 kilometers an hour, just like that, behind the guy from Poland. Guys from Poland always have big aerials sticking out the back of the car, but hopefully if he moves over, it's completely clear ahead of him. No, not gonna happen right now. But we'll see what happens as it gets later on. Maybe stop for a bite as we open up the roads. Uh, let them get a little bit less busy and go from there. A quick services stop, but this is an opportunity to actually look at the exterior of the car in the last little bit of daylight. And those of you who follow the channel frequently would know that a color like this would not be my normal choice. Donington Gray, it's quite 
discreet, I think we could say, but that's actually kind of fun about this car. It is a bit of a sleeper. You wouldn't necessarily realize, obviously, apart from the giant M badge on the rear boot lid, that this thing has as much power as it actually does and quite how capable it is. It is. The colors actually show the lines of the car quite nicely also. We just had a semi-decent stretch, but no camera rolling, so you can hear the fans of the car cooling it down at the moment. The headlights, I'm looking forward to seeing how well they work later on in the dark, because I've never actually done extensive miles in a car with these kind of systems that allow you to block out the things that are going on in front of you. But anyway, all has been well so far. We'll pop in, grab a bite to eat, and then we'll head, the head on the roads later on. Well, darkness has fallen, but that does mean we have a much less busy autobahn. So if I press the M1 button, and confirm it now. I've configured that exactly how I want the car with a slightly sporty configuration, but slightly softer suspension. I'm just gonna turn off the lights so I can see a little bit better. The headlights are brilliant. We get more sound out of the car now. Drop down the gears, open it up, and away we go. And this thing is so comfortable when you accelerate hard and when you're driving at high speed. It's a super relaxed drive. It's not very noisy, it has to be said, especially if you're driving in comfortable mode but you feel like you could just drive it forever and not be tired. The seats are great. Just waiting for a gap in front of us. We've got one now and away we go. Just the numbers on the dashboard climbing up. it back home in the garage in Frankfurt with the BMW M5. A huge thanks goes to BMW M for arranging this, for making it possible for me to drive this car in the coming months and let you know everything about it. We're going to do an awful lot of miles or kilometers I should say on road trips. Also perhaps try out the two-wheel drive drifting mode. Let's see what that's like at some point in the right environment. Take it down the autobahns, maybe around a track and also some more visits to BMW to check out individual and maybe even personalize the car a little bit along the way. First drive, can't complain, awesome experience today at the Velt. A big thanks to the team there for the opportunity to join them as well and well, experience collection day. I thoroughly recommend if you have the opportunity on a new BMW, do it. Incredible, incredible time that was had there. Awesome place to go and visit and to pick up one of the finest cars they offer. So I want to run you around the specification a bit more for this car because, well, the list goes on beyond a side of paper. There are a lot of customized parts of the specification and I'd like to take you through them all just quickly to come to the interior to show you, I think, one thing that I didn't actually talk about. Even little details, well, illuminated side sills, the M logo there on the floor mats, that's such a nice little thing. The M seat belts that you have as well. Everything about this car is just delightful. We've done about 400 kilometers in it already. The start of great things, but that is gonna wrap us up for today while the car is still cooling itself down from the last little bit of Autobahn. Anyway, thank you very much for watching, guys. As always, I hugely appreciate your support. A big thanks again to BMW M. Good things to come in the future. So there we have it. Thanks, and I'll see you again very soon. Cheers.